Okay, so I'm going to start out by giving the uh, the overview. We're we're pleased that you're here, and uh, the Civic League uh, is consistent with its mission. Is presenting uh, this program represents 24 neighborhood associations and over 1,900 due-paying dues-paying members on the island. And in today's forum, we're going to be focusing on energy conservation as a pocketbook issue. Plain and simple, it's uh, about steps that you can take to cut your energy bill as a homeowner or as a landlord or a renter, and also if you're in the commercial sector, ways that you can cut your energy bill uh, at your place of business. And toward that end, we're going to describe concrete possibilities. We're not going to talk about theories and feel-good things. We're going to talk about concrete things that you can do including uh, av availing yourself of various incentive programs that are open to Nantucket residents and businesses. And at the conclusion, uh, we are going to introduce you to some fellow Nantucketers who will be sitting at the table behind you. Uh, these are people who are uh, on-island contractors who are in the business of home and commercial energy conservation. They're listed at the bottom of the program, so you have the contact information in case you don't get a chance to chat with them uh, today. But they have individual specialties, and we wanted to encourage you to, uh, at the conclusion of the program, to uh, chat with them one-on-one. -on -one. If you uh, have an idea about something that uh, you'd like to pursue, and you have a specific question about how you get started, uh, they can answer those questions, and uh, we'll try to establish uh, some connections with people who want to pursue some of these options. Uh, before we get underway, the League pays a collective tribute to Flint Ranney, who was a stalwart advocate for energy conservation and a source of wise and practical advice. Uh, I want to introduce our speakers today. Uh, we have three speakers, Lauren Sinatra, myself, and Bob Patterson. Um, Lauren is with the town's energy office, which was established in 2011 to provide the town with guidance and assistance for island-wide energy projects and initiatives. The office operates under the direction of town administration and the Nantucket Board of Selectmen uh, with funding support by the Schmidt Family Foundation. Uh, Lauren is with the town energy office where she fosters informational public outreach and energy initiatives for reducing municipal and townwide energy consumption and costs, and she facilitates the uh, utilization of local and low impact energy resources on Nantucket. Her background is in corporate environmental strategy, serving several Fortune uh, 100 companies, and she also has served as special assistant to Dan Esty, uh, Connecticut's current commissioner of the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Our second speaker, uh, I'll just introduce briefly Bob Patterson, who I've known for quite some time. He is a principal with W. Robert Patterson and Associates and E3 Energy Solutions, which is a PV solar net metering credit management company. Uh, in plain English, uh, Bob has about 40 years of experience uh, dealing with the practical uh, issues uh, of implementing uh, energy savings steps in the commercial sector. He has a vast uh, amount of experience and he has uh, done this for all sorts of businesses, school districts, uh, cities and towns, showing them how they can act wisely to save energy. So I'm going to ask uh, Lauren to begin and as you'll see from the program she is going to talk first about um, how the town has been saving uh, on the energy bills, and also to give you some background on the energy office. Okay. Um, thank you, Peter, for the introduction and for inviting me tonight. I'm very happy to see um, a great out, uh, turnout. So let's jump right in. Um, the first presentation is on what the town of Nantucket and the energy office are doing presently to help reduce municipal energy consumption. And to uh, background for this story, I'm going to um, give you an overview on what our current energy baseline is. And it's based on data from fiscal year 2012. 
um, in fiscal year 2012, the town spent over $1.8 million on electricity for our buildings and facilities for 12,000 megawatt hours of electricity at 77 metered uh, accounts. Of that 12,000 uh, megawatt, uh, let's see, 194 came from our turbine at the high school and the remaining 11,800 were imported from our two underground undersea submarine cables. Using uh, data provided to us by National Grid, my partner, my colleague and I, uh, George Aronson, were able to compile a ranked list of the top 20 electricity consuming facilities, which account for 89.1% of all electricity used by the town. And our strategy was simply, let's focus on these top 20, specifically the top 10, to see what we can do to identify and implement cost-saving measures with rapid paybacks. I do want to show you this link, if I can. It was a cursor. Well, anyways, this link would take you to the um, Nantucket Energy Office website in which we have a broad spreadsheet of the top 20 facilities and the status of all of our actions regarding um, energy saving incentives and plans and just the status that we're uh, doing for each and every one of those top 20. Um, this pie chart illustrates um, the top 20 facilities and the, the users. The piece of the pie that is removed is all other electric accounts. So all of the pieces within the pie are all of the top 20 municipal users. Um, I thought this was interesting because you can ob obviously see how large, for example, the Surfside Wastewater Treatment Plant is at 20%, uh, the landfill composter at 15%, the high school, um, followed by the airport and public safety facility, and then, and then on. These are our top 10. And as I just explained, our top five account for 65.6% .6 of all of the town's electrical consumption. Uh, the top 10 contributes to 81.1%. Um, these are the 11 through 20. And as you can see, the total is um, 11 million, almost 12 million kilowatt hours, which is that 12,000 megawatt hours. So to take advantage of municipal um, utility-sponsored rebates and incentives, we've taken advantage of MassSave and their no-cost energy efficiency assessments that basically focus on lighting upgrades and non-lighting upgrades, um, which account for, let's see, um, HVAC equipment controls, refrigeration, geothermal systems, etc. cetera. Um, the lighting and uh, rebates that are out there are great. Um, it, it has National Grid paying up to 70% of the total install cost, and there are rapid paybacks. What it means to the, the, the electric customer is you're paying for a fraction of the install cost with a direct install program, which allows you to finance the balance for 24 months at 0% interest, all through your electric bill. So. Essentially, your ener energy savings pay for the upgrade costs, and it's always cash net positive since these projects typically have less than a two-year payback. Um, for each of the top 20, we've already embarked on energy efficiency audits, scoping studies, or post-commissioning studies, um, as well as for many of the, our top 20 as well. Um, for example, there are lighting upgrade projects already completed at the composter, and um, in the process of uh, being coordinated for February installations at the airport and Salt March Senior Center. I'm gonna review a brief case study of both the airport and the Salt March Senior Center. Um, I wish I had a laser pointer or something. Um, I hope you can see from this audit, this would be the summary page of the audit they received from the lighting um, assessment. Here it shows that National Grid would pay 60% of the total cost. Um, the airport would finance 40% balance for 0% over 24 months. So that means that although the electric bill will be charged um, over $1,100 more to finance the cost of the upgrades, 
the bill will decrease by over $2,000. This means that the airport will um, actually save $870 per month or over $10,000 per year. And after the 24 month financing period, of course, they reap all of the energy savings, which would be um, about $24,000. For the Saltmarsh Senior Center, this was our, I think, number 20 on our list. It's not um, large consumption compared to some of our bigger users, but um, they're still able to benefit as well from energy upgrades. Here you have National Grid paying 70% of the total install cost, with Elder Affairs financing the 30% balance. So they will be charged an extra $47.50 on their month or on their bill every month to finance the upgrades, but their bill will decrease on average $120. Um, so there would be saving $74 per month um, and almost $900 per year. This is kind of exciting to report to the town and to residents. Is, um, with our assistance, the town of Nantucket is now participating in the Leading by Example program, LED replacement bulb project. Um, it basically allows all existing incandescent and CFL bulbs in town offices and departments to be replaced with high efficiency LED bulbs for free. Um, <laughs> as of tomorrow, it's our due date so I should be receiving orders from all of the departments on how many bulbs they would they hope to get. Um, each of these bulbs is mercury free and highly efficient, but also typically very expensive. So this through this uh, grant opportunity through the DOER with National Grid and Phillips, we're getting this all for free. And my personal goal is to um, submit an order for at least 300 bulbs, which would be over $15,000 worth of um, equipment. These are some of the offerings through this program. Um, 60 watt incandescents can be switched with a 10 watt um, award-winning LED bulb. And not only are we getting the bulb for free, but we can save $33 per bulb. Um, I think this is gonna make um, an enormous reduction in our energy consumption uh, in the years to come. I'd like to now give an overview on the high school wind turbine, on the energy and income generated. And unfortunately, Barry Dulong, who is the facilities director of the schools, could not be here tonight. I'm gonna to try to tackle some of the content that he was going to cover. Um, the high school turbine was proposed in 2008 and installed in 2010 for approximately $600,000. Um, it was funded, of course, through efforts for the, uh, by the Students for Sustainability, Mass CEC, National Grid, and the Schmidt Family Foundation, as well as many other uh, Nantucket residents and businesses. The purpose was to provide the high school with renewable energy and educational value. When my partner George and I came on board in 2011, we noticed that the town was not registering the RECs, which is a very large income stream from renewable energy um, facilities, so that was one of our, our first um, challenges. So this quote on the bottom is what the, the typical expectations were for this turbine, which was that it would supply 10% of the high school's power, um, for, which would save the town about uh, $30,000. To date, the total energy generated has been in excess of 438 megawatt hours, and I did want to show you this link because you can actually witness live what the uh, wind turbine is generating, what the wind speed is, how much money it's saved the town, what the environmental benefits are. Seems to have frozen. Okay, so to recap to date, um, the turbine has produced over 438 megawatts of energy. Um, the environmental benefits have been that 832 pounds of nitrous oxide and over 2,000 pounds of carbon dioxide have been avoided. Um, in fiscal year 2012, the turbine produced 13.1% of the school's electricity and generated um, $33,236 in avoided energy savings. So I wanted to talk a bit about how we would quantify the savings of the turbine. And you would do this in two ways. The first would be in the savings from avoided national grid electricity charges. 
Um, that would include both supply charges and delivery charges. And then the proceeds from the sale of the RECs, which are the renewable energy credits. I'll just summarize quickly. So from October 2011 to December 2012, oh, there we go. Thank you. There we go, we're back on, not a little distorted. I don't know if I should touch that. <laughs> Um, the 100 kilowatt turbine has generated um, 249 megawatts of energy. I can't really see from there. Um, or essentially $25,800 in avoided electric charges. From the REC sales, which you can't really see, um, the Energy Office has been tracking the performance and production of this turbine so that we can register the RECs and sell them on the open market. Right now we have an exclusive contract with National Grid to sell the RECs to for $52 each. So again, a REC is um, the green credit for the equivalency of one megawatt um, hour produced. The savings on avoided or the turbine has generated savings from October 2011 to December 12 of $38,995 and that includes proceeds from the sale of RECs and savings on the National Grid Electric Bill. Okay, I think that concludes that, that PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give Lauren uh, a little bit of a break. She's on connection to talk about the uh, National Grid Home Energy Audit Program, but I thought I would put myself ahead and give you maybe uh, a two-minute explanation of this little brochure that you should get a copy of at the table there. This is a little brochure that uh, was put together by the Worcester Polytech students who were here this fall, and they were uh, working on a project for housing Nantucket. Can you hear me now? Uh, they were working on a project for Housing Nantucket, and they put together a brochure that was aimed specifically at uh, renters in that program, and we persuaded them to make a couple of modifications that would allow us to have a generic brochure that we can put in your hands. We can also put in the hands of uh, realtors who are dealing with summer residents who come to Nantucket the same way they hand out the brochure that says, by the way, here we take all our garbage to the dump, we don't have garbage disposals, etc. And try to encourage the uh, seasonal residents that they can play a part in energy conservation as well. So this is a generic version of the brochure that goes out to uh, you all, to landlords, to renters, and to anyone who might benefit from having a really simplified explanation of uh, little steps that you can take to uh, save on energy. A couple things that you'll find in here are kind of surprising. One thing is, uh, it says, did you know that a typical HD set top box with a DVR, I guess that's what we call in old fashioned terms, a TV set with all the bells and whistles, uses more electricity in a year than a new Energy Star refrigerator. That came as a big surprise to me. And it also tells you how, in addition to turning it off when you're not using it, there are smart power strips that you can use where you plug in your computer and your TV set and when it's not being used for a long period of time, it will automatically switch off uh, what they call the phantom load because all these things you have plugged into the wall are drawing electricity. Uh, and I wanted to just make a, a personal, uh, give you a personal example of 
what happens when you have uh, an energy audit, which Lauren is going to talk about. I had, I was one of the pioneering uh, people who signed up for an, uh, an energy, a home energy audit. And uh, they came in and they explained some things to me and they swapped out a very large number of bulbs. Um, they put in the latest compact fluorescent ones, which are even now going to be replaced by the even better LED ones. <clears throat> and they, I, I don't know exactly how this happened, but the combination of the bulbs and also uh, pointing out that I had a dehumidifier on in a crawl space that was running continuously 24 hours a day and I was told that that was the equivalent of having a very old energy inefficient refrigerator running. Uh, made those changes and then I started tracking my electricity bills and I saw a whopping 24 percent drop in what I was paying each month year over year. So I came away quite impressed. So I want to encourage you to uh, listen carefully to what Lauren's going to talk about next which is the um, home energy, the Engrid Home Energy Audit Program, which all of us can take advantage of and in fact all of us are paying for through a little surcharge that is kind of tucked into your energy bill that says this is a little bit more money we're taking from you to pay for this program and now because of the energy office we are accessing that program and getting our full money's worth. So do you want to start Lauren? So demystifying the Mass Safe program and an update on how we've bettered the program on Nantucket. What is Mass Save? Mass Save is a utility sponsored energy conservation program that we all pay for. We each pay for an energy efficiency charge on our monthly electric bills that funds this service that can offer economic incentives to residents to make energy improvements in their homes and to reduce their energy consumption. Um, on average, each of us will pay $63 a year uh, for this energy efficiency charge, which goes towards the Mass Save programs and its offerings. All of Nantucket residents who are on the grid and have an electric bill are um, eligible for this program. So why would utilities want us to reduce our home energy consumption? It seems counterintuitive because they have economic incentive to do so. It's easier to get um, customers to reduce their demand, then build new infrastructure. And they would much rather do that than have to pay for, or help, you know, and we would pay for it, but to install a third submarine cable, um, which would essentially be in the upwards of $50 million. Plus, Massachusetts law requires that they, they help us reduce our energy consumption. These are the offerings, some of the offerings uh, MassSave allows per year. Um, a no-cost energy assessment, subsidized insulation, 75% up to $2,000. So if your insulation job is quoted for more than $2,000, you could stretch it over two years or three years so you can take advantage of that 75% incentive. Free air sealing, rebates on space heating, water heaters, heat pumps, and then also a 0% heat loan um, to finance these energy improvements. So this program is more than just free light bulbs. It's really an opportunity for you to learn how the systems in your house operate, as well as how to maintain and upgrade them. Um, an energy assessment takes one and a half to two hours if done thoroughly and correctly. The homeowner or resident should be on site to walk with the home assessor and to ask questions and be engaged in the process. Um, the assessor does install CFLs, um, Low, low flowing um, shower heads, thermostats, um, and install is in quotes because in our recent history, they have not been installing such equipment, but it is our goal to have them do that in the near future. They also check for insulation in your home's exterior walls and attic and basement, mold moisture and mildew problems in your basement and attic, and the efficiency and safety of combustion appliances and other eligible rebates. Before the assessor leaves, they do hand you a customized energy audit that summarizes all of their findings and they will sit down with you and explain all of your applicable incentives and how to take advantage of the rebates. 
So there are three ways currently to sign up for an energy assessment. We now have a week uh, confirmed in March from the 11th to 15th that we're accepting um, appointments. I believe we have about 50 openings. So if anyone's interested, they can either sign up online. Um, I'm not going to press that link, but you can do. You can easily fill out a form on the acenergy.org website. You can call Mass Save, or you can email or call me. My information is listed below. So I'm going to take a few minutes to explain to you a brief history of Mass Save and where we were, where we are, and where we hope to go. Prior to 2012 and the existence of the Energy Office, Mass Save came to Nantucket once a year. Um, in 2011, for example, 32 homes got, got received a home energy assessment. Aside from the bill inserts, Mass Save spent zero dollars and zero effort on local advertising and outreach. There were many problems when you would call the Mass Save call center and you, you explained that you lived in Nantucket. These are actual quotes. Um, and Nantucket is not in our service territory. So, sorry. Nantucket, where is that? You are not on our map. We've already visited Nantucket this year, but we can add you on the wait list for next year. We will call you once we confirm a date to return, and then they would never follow through. This was very typical prior to 2012. When the Nantucket Energy Office came on board, we did some immediate efforts to try to get this program back on track. We understood the value of it and the value to the residents, and we needed it to um, you know, increase its accessibility and, and opportunities for all of us. So we initiated and fostered relationships with key national grid executives. We brought to, to light the unacceptable status quo. All of us collectively pay over 700,000 a year in surcharges to fund this program. And if you divide that between the 32 um, energy audits that happened in 2011, each of those would have cost us over 20 grand. And it also allowed us um, accountability. We established a direct line of communication to re report ongoing problems and signs of progress. We also recommended applying the visiting physician model to the home assessment scheduling, where we would designate audit weeks on a quarterly basis, and then it would help us to streamline our, our marketing, our outreach efforts, and uh, maximize limited resources. And to date, it's worked extremely well. Um, it's increased program accessibility and public awareness. Last year, for example, we had 176 home energy assessments um, over three energy audit weeks, um, which is a 550% increase from 2011. We've actively helped residents sign up and learn more about the opportunities. We've expanded local marketing. Um, and most importantly, we've kickstarted the program and the word of mouth viral marketing. People who've had an audit tend to talk about how good of an experience it was and recommend it to neighbors and friends and family. Um, some other initiatives that we've been involved with were a contractor info session, a community open house live demo um, that was unfortunately canceled due to the weather but we hope to reschedule in the spring. It would allow curious residents to actually witness a live energy audit before um, committing to signing up for one. And we've also assisted National Grid to engage our local banks to become lenders for the heat loan program. There were still unresolved issues and problems after all of the progress we had made. Um, the audit weeks still resulted in uh, a bottleneck. Um, the auditors would rush through the appointments, they would run out of material, they would not follow up with Nantucket residents and um, they would neglect certain services. As mentioned, they typically would not install thermostats um, because they were either in a rush to get to the next client or to make their ferry. And we became aware of all the reasons why the existing contractor models that are available to contractors on the mainland would not work here. Um, knowing all of these problems, I helped get the W. PI student research project going to evaluate the awareness and effectiveness of the Mass Save program. And I have included some interesting findings here. So uh, 
73% of the population do not know that they are paying a surcharge on their bills to fund this program. 100% of survey participants who had received an energy audit would recommend the program, and 75% said they already had done so. 86% um, of respondents agreed or strongly agreed that they consciously try to save money, and 74% agreed that Nantucket residents should do more to save money. So the data indicates that not only are Nantucket residents concerned about their own energy efficiency, but also the efforts of others on the island. Um, very important insight that came out of this research were that many of the respondents said that they had felt unprepared or unsure what to expect at their energy assessment. This is an interesting finding maybe for the Civic League specifically that the geographic locations of the energy audits mirrored population distribution. So it seems like we have some opportunities out in Madiket and Sconset there. These were the top WPI recommendations um, for the town. Hire one or more local contractors to conduct HEAs year-round. Not the town personally, but to um, encourage National Grid and MassSave to do so. The second was to inform program participants about the process of the audit, program outcomes, and necessary preparations prior to the assessment. Third, utilize local internet and newspaper advertisements to reach the most amount of residents. And third, include more information about the surcharge. No one likes paying for nothing. So, you know, you are entitled to these services because you are already paying for them. Taking these recommendations, um, we then acted on each of them. So, as of last week, I did receive confirmation from MassSave that they will be directly hiring a local Nantucket-based resident to work on their behalf to do the energy assessments on a consistent and year-round basis. They will then use the upcoming March Energy Audit Week to help with training. Um, so I'm hoping some of the contractors in the audience now will consider responding to that opportunity. The second, um, as of recently, MassSave now sends customized emails to residents who sign up for an energy assessment with clear information on how to prepare and what to expect at the time of the audit. Um, I will be receiving an audit on my home in March and was very surprised to receive this uh, email with all of this information because I had known it was a problem, but I didn't know that they had taken our recommendations seriously. So it's a great improvement. Um, third is we do have our upcoming audit week as mentioned, March 11th through 15th. So you can expect to see more ads in our local media. And lastly, is include more information in bills and advertising about the surcharges that all customers are currently paying. And I know I've already hammered you over the head with that fact, but our new outreach efforts will target caretakers, landlords, and realtors that focus on this fact and how they can help their clients, renters, and home buyers to save money through these entitled energy saving opportunities. So again, there are three ways to sign up. Um, many slots left for March and I encourage you all to do so. So thank you very much. Before we move on to the small business focus, um, I'd like to take a few minutes to invite questions uh, that some of you may have about this program. It's a very important program, and uh, I think you know Lauren and the Energy Office deserve uh, an enormous amount of credit for taking a program that was kind of stumbling along uh, from National Grid and really refining it, streamlining it, and really making it work to our benefit on the island uh, for what we're paying. And slowly but surely, we're chipping away at energy use and enabling uh, homeowners to save money. So it's, it's a really good thing. Now, do you have any questions about how this works? Uh, what you would do if you wanted to sign up for an audit, what's involved, because we're here to answer those questions. Yes? Is there any upcoming calls? It's, I'll let you answer. You'll never hear them say the word free. They say no cost, because essentially you are already paying for that service through the surcharge. So like after they visit my house, they give me a light bulb, 
right on site, they install the light bulbs, the thermostat, all the goodies, um, and then they give you information on the incentives available for all the weatherization projects, for example. Um, oh, back there. Um, if you have oil heat, you're still entitled to the incentives of the program. Um, they do ask what your type of heating, your primary heating fuel is when you do sign up, but um, even if it's not electric, whether it's propane, oil-based, you're still entitled to the, the program incentives. There are two separate uh, utility incentive programs. One was for the munis municipalities where we are receiving free LED bulbs for municipal buildings, which was a separate grant that um, my office helped get Nantucket in. Um, but with MassSave, they will replace all of your incandescents and older CFLs with the more current CFLs. It is an annual. Those were all annual incentives and offerings. So you are entitled to a free, excuse me, a no cost energy assessment every year, as well as all of those incentives. They're based on a yearly basis. Any other questions? They don't make any, this from a real one, they don't make any distinction to like rent your house They do. They ask you if you own your house or rent your house, but as long as you pay for your utility bill, you're paying the surcharge and you're entitled to the, um, what, uh, to the at least the, um, the bulbs and the thermostats. Of course, you would need your landlord's permission to do any weatherization work or more entailed work. Correct. Um, the tenants can sign up directly if they have a National Grid electric bill with that address on it. And as a realtor, I might just recommend that you inform any home buyer of this opportunity. I know there's many, many old homes in this town that could benefit from the weatherization services. On the uh, light bulbs, the compact fluorescence, does National Grid have any uh, plan to I've heard a rumor that next year they will be introducing one free LED per home assessment. Um, part of the Mass Save program, you're also entitled to a catalog of all lighting fixtures, which would entitle you to dis heavily discounted incentivized rates on all bulbs. And if you have one of the folders that were at the entrance, there's there's information on that catalog. But like, like everything else electronic, they have to come down in price, just generally? You would hope so. You would think so. Um, I, I've had some experience with these, and I've actually tried some of the LEDs, and we're sort of in a transitional phase. The first thing to understand about the home energy audit is the CFLs, the compact fluorescent bulbs that they equip you with, are much better than the ones you bought last year or the year before that your spouse says, I don't like the light. They're, I mean, there they're really has been a change. They're, they're not as bad as they used to be. They're not perfect, but now they have dimmable versions, and they're much better than what they were. The My understanding of the LEDs, because I've been following them, just waiting to pounce, is that the prices are going to come down dramatically in the next year or two, simply because economies of scale and production are at an early stage. So I would guess that it's likely that you're going to see things that are now selling for 10 or $15 to be selling for a whole lot less. And I suspect that National Grid will see in its, in its own interest to take a product that now generates almost all light and almost no heat uh, at the right price point, they'll start to use those. And those, of course, are even better than the CFLs. So stay tuned, and 
what it means is if you ask for your home energy audit every year, they'll come back and say, well, now we have some new Santa Claus gifts to give you that are even better. So you, all you have to do is spend the hour or two with them and you benefit from it. That's true. Thank you, Peter. Back there. That is my understanding. So say they quoted you for a $2,000 job, you can basically finance it in one year and pay, uh, what is it, $500. But if it's double that, um, you could extend it over several years, and most people do. The heat loan is a way to finance your home energy improvements uh, for zero percent interest. So there's um, a lot to that incentive and I encourage you to pick up one of the folders or visit MassSave.com for more, all, the, all the details. For air sealing? Well, um, you do receive free air sealing if you're, you're eligible for insulation work. But during your energy audit, they do not use a blower door test, for example. But when they come back to do your insulation work, they are supposed to use that equipment to find exactly where you have the air leakage. That's our goal, and I, I can say we're going to achieve that in next year. And you're right, you identified a critical flaw of, of the whole program having to send energy auditors from their Westboro headquarters, put them up at the Jared Coffin House for a week, pay for their meals, their transportation on the ferry, including their vehicles. Um, so it, it, obviously it's a win-win situation for everybody if they hired local. And it's taken a year of meetings and discussions and follow-up to get them to uh, see the light. You know, as a caretaker, I had offered my services to just be able to help with the installation of light bulbs. I mean, you know, how many people can take it? Yep. But uh, the rules and regulations precluded anybody but the tech from doing that, so it did take a long time. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? If not, uh, I'm going to pray that Bob Patterson's presentation is would resolve the problem. Otherwise, I'm going to ask Bob to come up and. And I'm just going to leave you with one. The presentation one in. statistic is that the res residential market accounts for nearly 65 percent of our island-wide energy consumption. So, if we want our island-wide energy consumption to go down, it starts with each and every one of us. Right. Thank you. I think what we'll do is um, we have made these copies in the old archaic way of doing things and uh, we'll pass them out to everybody and um, I'll speak from my copy up here and uh, hopefully there, there are enough copies if people can share them uh, with the neighbor uh, we can just go ahead and talk about uh, commercial opportunities for energy savings on Nantucket. My name is uh, Bob Patterson. I have a company that does uh, commercial and municipal uh, town school system energy conservation, energy purchasing work, as well as uh, photovoltaic solar. And um, I'd like to just bring four ideas to the table here for the town of Nantucket and for many of the commercial establishments that 
use, as Lauren's slide showed, use quite a bit of energy, or some of the larger energy consumers, and in particular, very important when you talk to the lodging uh, people about their energy use, they are very reluctant to scale back on air conditioning during the summer months when people are coming to uh, stay. Oh, good grief, we've got something here. What I wanted to talk about today were really four topics. Uh, collaborative energy purchasing, primarily electricity. In many other communities, we talk about collaborative energy purchasing as electricity and natural gas. But obviously, natural gas is uh, the uses here on the island are propane and fuel. We can talk a little bit about collaborative purchasing of those, but mainly it's electricity. That's where the best benefit is going to be for the island. We also talk about what I term performance contracts for energy efficiency improvements. Many of the things that uh, you were learning from Lauren about energy conservation in homes can be the very same in uh, commercial establishments and as well as the same state agency and the same uh, contribution you make for residential energy conservation every month on your bill actually can go to commercial establishments also. I'd like to introduce two other topics here today. Uh, geothermal option for heating and cooling. I think that has a great deal of benefit for larger establishments on the island, particularly establishments that are owned by uh, their proprietors and have a, a longer term history. This is a, uh, an energy conservation approach that uh, has merit, but it only has merit if you're going to be long standing in that particular facility. As an example, the new uh, safety facility out on Fairgrounds Road is heated by uh, heat, uh, electric heat pumps there. So there are applications of this on the island. And finally, I'd like to just talk briefly about photovoltaic. PV means photovoltaic, uh, solar electricity production. And a very confusing issue, I'll try to set some light on it, it's the issue of called net meter in credits. And there's a way in which you can get substantial amount of money back from the utility for that. Basically, the, I started about 20 years ago doing collaborative energy purchasing. That was purchasing electricity and natural gas for industry, commercial establishments, towns, school systems, etc. And there's an opportunity there to put many different accounts together to create what I would call an uh, area of economic opportunity to get the attention of the suppliers. If you go out into the supply market today and you're not talking about a million dollars or two million dollars or ten million dollars of purchases, many of the suppliers that uh, what we term third party suppliers uh, in this marketplace that can supply electricity the very same way that National Grid has a supply of electricity, which you now call basic service, you can you're paying 7.34 cents per for basic service today on your electricity bill. Typically what we look at is the opportunity to go into the marketplace with large commercial accounts, a, a good number of them, and do better than that 7.34 cents per kilowatt hour. Typically we uh, see that this approach uh, can save about one cent per kilowatt hour. So if you're a commercial establishment and you can get together with some of your other commercial neighbors and uh, go and contract with a third party supplier, a third party supplier would be somebody like TransCanada Power Marketing, Constellation Energy, Direct Energy. These are suppliers that supply electricity alongside and into the national grid distribution system. Uh, this is a very uh, helpful approach because it has some contracting benefits and that is that the contracts uh, in terms of the legal language and the approach taken in buying 
electricity. They, these are all vetted. We're working off well-established uh, contract models, as well as you're getting the attention of some of the top suppliers in the business to uh, pay attention to your needs because you've joined together with several others and you have a significant contract dollar value and they look for that. They don't want to spend a lot of money on somebody that's going to use two or three hundred thousand dollars of electricity a year. They want to uh, see a group of customers that might use two million dollars of electricity a year and bid on that. The effort here, typically what we do is we Instead of car, car, uh, charging a brokerage fee, which is a fee per kilowatt hour, we charge just an upfront flat fee per account. If you have, say, 20 or 30 different electricity accounts that you're contracting for, we would just charge $200 to do the whole contracting process. It's, it's fairly streamlined. It's, uh, as I said before, well vetted. Uh, and we can be very efficient at it, uh, taking your bills, taking your uh, electricity information, putting it down into a, a spreadsheet, which the suppliers want to see and price against, and uh, turn that around and get responses back. We also help evaluate the various bids, look at other performance issues that uh, had they had a good performance in supplying electricity over the last three, four, five years? Have they had any hiccups or problems? And uh, we, we proceed to make a recommendation as to who you should purchase the electricity from, and that way lock in some savings. Typically, we're looking at a process that lasts maybe four to six weeks. We can turn it around very quickly, and we're looking at contracts that can be as brief as two years and may go out three to five years. So as an example, uh, recently we were buying electricity in the, you were paying right now in your basic service rate, about 7.34 cents per kilowatt hour. We're looking at locking in prices that are below seven cents and into the 6.7 cents per kilowatt hour. Right now, the marketplace for electricity is at an all time low uh, primarily because of the issue of natural gas supply into the region and, as you've all heard, the whole issue of, of the fracking opportunities that are producing this oversupply of natural gas which holds the price of electricity down. So that, that's the opportunity here for commercial establishments to work together. Uh, as Lauren was pointing out, there are a lot of opportunities to save electricity and save energy in um, your facility, a commercial facility. Uh, obviously, lighting is, is key. And the same sort of lighting opportunities that you have for residential properties or you have for the, the municipal buildings of Nantucket, you have for commercial buildings. Uh, VFDs, variable frequency drives, motors, water heaters. You can go down the whole list. Most of all, if you can get into a replacement situation with boilers, and this is where it becomes key to my next point on uh, uh, groundwater heating, that you can make a, a very substantial change in the energy use in a building on Nantucket. Obviously, you want to be certain that your building envelope is tight. There are the mass assistance, mass save assistance programs, and I think if you have a building and you want, uh, you can have an audit, and, and I would wholeheartedly recommend that you go ahead and take and do the audit, uh, see what they say in terms of where you can save, and look at the, other, the benefits in terms of tax incentives and tax credits and ways in which you can, in fact, manage the process so that you lower your upfront costs and reap the benefit of your savings in the long term. One of the other elements to doing all of this are, uh, comes down to what I term performance contracting. Many suppliers and vendors of equipment will come in and if 
for example, there were a dozen buildings or so, uh, commercial buildings here on the island. The building owners got together and formed a bit of a collaborative to take a look at energy efficiency improvements for their buildings. You could go to some of the ESCO, these are energy service companies that do these more major audit works and hire, they do the audits and then they hire local vendors, local, local contractors to do the work and they essentially provide the financial backbone to uh, a major upgrade. Uh, as we find with many of these opportunities, some of the areas where we can save the most amount of money and it's always the, the highest threshold is, is getting into a new heating system or a boiler. And here on the island, that's a, that's a very major change that would have to be made. You've got high fuel costs for most boilers. Uh, I think there are some opportunities we'll talk about in just a minute, but nonetheless, that is a very high hurdle value uh, item that needs to be carefully studied if you're going to look at what can you do to make your building uh, a long-term success. It's not a short-term solution. Typically what we're seeing is there's savings that uh, can be generated off your existing energy use in a building between 10 and, and 30 percent. So if you take your bill and take 10 percent or take 30 percent, now that gives you a range of what you might save uh, on an annual basis for experts in who know the island, know the, the buildings, know the environment here, and get them to really help you home in on what makes sense for your building. Briefly, uh, I think this is one of the areas where uh, we're starting to see, as I mentioned, the public safety building uh, other buildings, people are, are going ahead and you doing geothermal heating and cooling. And that's where you take a, can take an existing well or you can drill a new well and you take the groundwater, which is typically, let's say, at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and you uh, use that and extract the heat, the difference between the 40 degrees and say the temperature outside today at 30 degrees, you extract the heat out of the water and use that to heat the building. It's an electric heat pump that does that. It's very efficient and it provides a different sort of heat than maybe you're used to, but it is nonetheless, uh, I think, a very attractive way to proceed here on the island with uh, heating retrofits and older boilers that uh, you question whether or not you want to go back to your your old fuel of propane or, or fuel oil. It is an option to look at. It is a long-term option, uh, option. It doesn't pay back very quickly, but it is a, a way of saving uh, your energy costs and over the, the long term your 15 to 30 percent of the costs can be saved in a system of this size, but you have a very large capital cost. I think it's also uh, an opportunity to uh, take, take a look at in, indeed the incentives that you can get, the rebates and tax credits. If you can use tax credits efficiently uh, in your business, then it can make a little bit better sense in terms of an investment in geothermal heating. And needless to say, with the 40 degree temperature water, if you have a large need for air conditioning during the summertime, you've got 40 degree water to cool your building. You can cool your building down very efficiently just by circulating that water and, and uh, driving the uh, cool temperatures through your heating and cooling system. Finally, uh, there is a, a new, not so new, but um, it's been a program that's been around for three years now where one leg of the governor's stool in terms of renewable energy is a photovoltaic solar program 
It's been f very successful throughout the Commonwealth and it provides an opportunity for commercial establishments to, to do uh, either what I call rooftop, that's a typical uh, solar array that goes on the top of the building, or what we call is a standalone, that would be a system that stands alone on the property or in a field, or it can even be, uh, as we are doing in some communities, can, can find that that uh, PV solar array doesn't even have to be in your serv in, in your uh, town or community. It can, as long as it's in the same load zone as your national grid uh, uh, load zone here in the southeast of Massachusetts. What happens essentially is with behind the meter types of projects, whether it's standing on the ground or it's on your roof you can put the electricity into your meter and essentially uh, lower the demand, the amount of electricity that you would demand each month from National Grid and therefore reduce your bill directly. The other opportunity is to do what is called net metering and that is to sell the electricity, send electricity out into the grid and get a net metering credit for that. That net metering credit is is approved by regulation as a specific value and as an example you can be paying for the net metering credit or your system your solar solar system let's say at 10 cents a kilowatt hour and you get a 13 or 15 cent credit therefore you're ahead three cents or five cents for every kilowatt hour that your solar system produces that way you end up with credits coming onto your bill almost as if your bill were uh, uh, representing the reduced demand of a behind the meter system. The incentives here are, are long term. You're going to be financing these systems with equipment rebates, tax credits, uh, or you can find developer vendors that will put a contract together for you. They're going to want to see a contract that's 10 or 15 years in length. Uh, one of the av avenues for this, I asked Lauren whether or not the town of Nantucket was looking at this. There is a program called Solarize Massachusetts that creates a focal person. Uh, it could be somebody like Lauren, could be somebody else that is to be the focus of all the photovoltaic development uh, for commercial establishments and as well as residential on the island and that might be something for the town of Nantucket to consider. Uh, one of the things that is very important about doing a photovoltaic system is that it only takes months. Um, for for the, my house I got uh, within about six weeks I got an an authorization to hook up a, a, a photovoltaic system on the house and it probably is going to take uh, uh, an afternoon to an evening once the system arrives on the island to hook it up and have it operational. Uh, if you're building it on your roof or on your property from pieces, it's a very short period of time once you've got, it can be less than a month to put the system together once you've got your interconnection application from National Grid. You have to apply to National Grid. They have a limitation on the number of systems that they're willing to accept, certain percentage of their capacity and a certain percentage in uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. But those uh, opportunities are still open for private uh, and commercial developers of uh, photovoltaic systems. What, what are we talking about? We're talking about on a power purchase agreement, uh, which could be equal to the amount of electricity you pay every year, that you could get five to seven cents per kilowatt hour off your bill. It's substantial. Um, just as an example, there, there are large systems that we've uh, been involved in where a commercial establishment put two and a half megawatts 
of solar capacity on the large roof of its building down in Fall River. And they, in fact, sold that electricity off to a school system so that the school system could get the net metering credits and they could get uh, remuneration for having the system on the top of their building. So there are all sorts of trade-offs that are going on today in this whole field. And it's very important that when you start, if you want to think about uh, photovoltaic systems, you have to start saying to yourself, well, do we want it on the roof or do we want it just to stand alone someplace beside our property or in a, on an open field that we know where we could put a photovoltaic system? And are we going to net meter it? Are we going to bring the electricity into our meter or are we going to get the credits and bring the credits onto our bill? Those are all some of the decisions that have to be made as you start to look forward to the opportunities here. I must say one, one of the elements that is coming along very quickly, I think it's going to be uh, instrumental in making it much more attractive, is um, what I call a photovoltaic or PV solar shingle. It's a three, it would be just like a three-tap shingle. It can be mounted on the, the roof of your house. Uh, you would roof the whole house with the PV shingle, even the north side and um, it will look exactly the same as a shingled roof, but it will give you uh, uh, a green roof. You'll get electricity from the solar panels throughout the year. Yes, it won't give you uh, the solar uh, electricity if it snows, but um, I don't know how many more winters we're going to see with Nantucket getting the snow and Boston not getting much in the way of snow, but. Uh, this is an opportunity that we see coming along, as well as what I call portable PV solar systems. People will develop portable sol solar systems so that, for instance, uh, during the summertime, somebody who wants solar electricity for their cottage could uh, rent a system, hook it up to their building, get the solar electricity, a lot of people like to do this just to be green. It also can save money, uh, but it is another avenue that people are starting to explore in terms of, of uh, solar electricity. Uh, this is just a, a brief summary of the kinds of things that uh, Patterson Associates does, and uh, we're, we're working throughout the Northeast some in California and some in New York State in terms of looking at what I would term more utility scale and larger, t larger size commercial scale uh, electricity, natural gas, uh, and some fuel oil opportunities. If uh, there are any questions, I could take them. Yes? How, uh, how well developed is the technology in solar shingles? It's... it's uh, it's available. Uh, right now, what we're trying to do, trying to figure out, is how it can be produced in a factory so that when you uh, get the layoffs for a solar roof, you can have the first row of shingles all arrive, all electrically connected, and can be nailed with a, a nail gun right onto the lath or right onto the roof, and then you lay out the second layer and, and so on, and just roll it out. Uh, it's going to be fairly attractive once they figure out how they can get the certification to put the shingles together in a factory and then and deliver it on site and still keep the underwriter lab approvals for that. But it's coming along. It should be six months to a year, and we should have something. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a. a an ordinary asphalt shingle or a solar shingle. You won't see the you won't see the actual array in the in the sort of asphalt part of the the shingle. I'm sorry. Actually, uh, we've already had a discussion with them, and they were very attractive. We we were in to talk to them about another solar uh, shingle we have, which is an equi slate equivalent, and they were uh, more interested in the asphalt shingle that we had kind of tucked into a briefcase, then there are fewer, we thought there might be more 
uh, slate roofs on Nantucket than there really are. And uh, we're trying to get, our friend's company is trying to get the Virginia Historical Association to approve the installation of this slate product on historical buildings in Virginia. And we think that would be a major step towards uh, helping to replace the roofs on historic homes that desperately need new roofs. All of this would be that the, the cost of the, the roofing would be virtually no different than doing an, a standard sort of deluxe uh, shingling job, whether it's slate, uh, cedar, or uh, asphalt. The cost of installation. The cost of installation and the cost of the product installed, yes. Yes? Well, that was, uh, that was my question. Uh, a little bit about the historic aspect of that. Going over to the town of Yarmouth, for instance, hey, the town building, the town hall building, has now installed uh, a solar panel array. It's actually viewable from Route 28 in the historic district anymore. But, uh, Well, I think I think that's already been tried and tested. Some people have tried to. Uh, I, I think there was an issue even on the public safety building of putting some solar arrays on the south side, and that was turned down because they would uh, they wouldn't conform to the view of people driving along Fairground Fairgrounds Road. The roof shingles are, appear to be the way that this can go forward. Um, we did talk to some, a couple of roofers here on the island about the idea of the shingle, the asphalt three-tab shingle, and they were very pleased to hear that some a product like that could be made available. Now, this would be available uh, from companies. There are some other shingles that are out there that are not quite the same. They're, they're called shingles, but they're not really like a three-tab asphalt shingle. And uh, so this... Uh, Opportunity, I think people are, are jumping on because to make to make a solar a roof product that is really a competitive roofing product, and you get the benefit of a green roof or PV solar uh, in addition to just re-roofing your roof uh, is, I think, the way to go. Any other? Yes. Well, it's, that's the whole question. When you're, you're paying, if, if uh, our uh, figures, the figures I've seen are right, uh, if you're doing a slate roof, you're talking anywhere between 65 and $75 a square foot, uh, you would be doing the whole roof just so that it all looks consistent and not you don't switch from the solar uh, uh, cells to the solar solar slates to a um, uh, regular slate for the, for the north side of the roof, so it would all look the same. Similarly for the price of uh, at the asphalt shingle, we're, we're hoping that that, or at least I'm hoping, that that comes in anywhere from eight to fifteen dollars a square foot for the uh, installation of, of a solar asphalt three tab shingled roof. And if, at that price, um, I would see that you would just produce uh, and, and install the, the shingles on the north face. It's going to maybe operate at uh, 50, 60 percent efficiency, but nonetheless, it's to be consistent, uh, consistent look. Uh, we, we feel it's more important. People are, are not going to want to see something different on uh, the north face than is on the east and west and south faces of a roof. I'd like to thank our two speakers for enlightening us on the possibilities today. I think we're all left with the thought that we want to do something like this, but we're not sure how to get started or maybe we need some specialized one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling. And we have here uh, some 
non-pilot contractors who will be invited to attend. And I'd like to ask you to just raise your hand and identify yourself briefly. Uh, say who you are, and uh, these folks will be here for a few minutes afterward. You can talk to them one-on-one -on -one and contact them again in the future if you want to get more information. And I ask you guys to raise your hand and identify yourself one by one. I'm hand up to you. You are Nantucket Building Science. Bobby can hands up his solar license for Christian. Uh yeah, so we can do a test tax I have a weatherization for uh air sales. Um the new lower doors and the new red and the all of the five years on the company. Um Zach you show um that this is a tax smart and do commercial LED applications using gas saves, upstream commercial center program. Okay, so in conclusion, uh, touch base with these guys. Uh, you have something to save, which is the email contacts for them. I know you're not going to want to get up tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, and this would be the first thing you want to do, but maybe a week or two from now, you may say, I want to get started on this. This is your point of departure, and I want to thank you.